Uh, you can see my screen. So this conference will now be recorded. Y yes, Venkat, yeah. I can see yours. Well, guys, uh, do you have any questions regarding previous session? Hope uh, you can see uh, my uh, recording session. I shared you all the people. So, uh, sorry for the bit late, actually. So uh, today I will share early, early morning only. Uh, if you if you don't have any questions, we'll continue the session. If you have any questions, I will answer that first. Then we'll continue. Uh, yeah, Venkat, I have a, uh, already installed uh, uh, the software in my machine. Will okay. it get uh, expired in a month or uh, yes, it will get expired? Okay, I need to download it once again. Not required to download. So generally, once you uh, download, there is a zip content it will give, right? Yes. So after that, you unzip it, then you will use it. No? So remove that unzipped content so you can unzip once again, same zipped content. It will work for you. Uh, okay, okay, right? Fine, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. I Actually, uh, expired in the sense, some of the options uh, stops working actually, like debugging, some options actually. So then, uh, mm -hmm. what you can do is just uh, whatever the unzipped content, just remove it once again, unzip it. Or else okay. it's better to take uh, latest. Why? Because so earlier three point. So you are using six point four four, right? Any points for you? Uh, six point five. I'll tell. I will tell. So uh, here is an option uh, actually. Go to help and see the about any points to do. It will tell us the version six point four four. Okay. So take the latest. Then now it is a six point five. It will support three point nine. Okay. Earlier yesterday I showed okay. you the link, right? So you know the uh, so yes, that, yes. You know, um, it will bit fast. Any issues are there in any point studio? Maybe they fix it, right? So every time they release a new versions, some of the bug fixes they will do. So compared to earlier version, it will bit faster than that. So some kind of uh, bugs they will fix it actually. So that you know, so even any point studio also bit faster than earlier versions. Okay, okay. so take latest every month. That's better. Okay, so enterprise edition and uh, customized edition mm -hmm. are having both uh, same options, right? Both are having. No, no, I told you, no, there is a difference actually. Uh, I mean, uh, so whatever the uh, enterprise, enterprise, uh, uh, enterprise connectors like Salesforce, SAP, mm -hmm. and then uh, some okay. whatever the enterprise connector. Most of them, uh, many enterprise connectors are there actually. So that will available in only uh, uh -huh. enterprise version. That's a problem. That's only really clearly. So uh, okay. minute edition enterprise edition major difference is so whatever the enterprise uh, connectors enterprise things are there. So that won't available in the palette. That is one thing. Other thing is mm -hmm. uh, if you go for support kind of thing. So whatever you are implementing. Suppose I implemented mm -hmm. a big flow, uh, complex flow I implemented. Suddenly, it stops working uh, in the server, like whatever the server you are using. Server also uh, getting stopped working. So then, uh, if you if you talk to MuleSoft, so they won't responsible responsible for that actually. Okay. So yeah, in the enterprise edition they have to responsible. So boss, mm -hmm. your connector, you implemented, so it stops working because of that. So my business get lost. Suppose five minutes uh, server down in the production, so the loss amount, right? The dollars of business, the, they will get lost, right? So that kind of uh, uh, responsibility they should have for this enterprise edition. The okay. the community, they won't be responsible for anything. So because it's okay. an open source, right? So you download it from the Google you are using, so nobody responsible for that. Okay. Using 6.3 version, 6.3.0. Just update it. Just okay. uh, instead, I shared you the link. Right? In that, you will get 6.5. Okay. Download freshly. Uh -huh. Put it in your local. Okay. And you can start using. Sure. Okay. Okay. Hope you guys are clear. So, any other questions, guys? Okay. So, we are good. So, let's start. So, uh, yesterday, we discussed about. Uh, any point studio so about any point studio guys 
So try to play with any point studio. So where is that uh, all required options and then so you have to know it actually. So otherwise, you know, um, so the, how to switch the perspectives. So sometimes, you know, you can see, suppose I want to see some configuration so that you can see only when you are selecting mule design view. Suppose I'm in a mule design debug view. I'm trying to open the configuration. It won't open. So these kind of things, you should aware it. Suppose it, uh, the any point studio, it's look like a clumsy. It's not uh, looking properly. I can't be to show package explorer and all. So just simply right click on this, right? There is a reset button will come. Reset button will come. So click reset. It will go to the old state, how it is uh, original state. It will get clearly package explorer, mule palette. See here, there is no console here. So just go to anything is missing in the bottom. So just go to here and then click window. There is a show view option is there. So here you can see, I want to see the console, click console, console will come here. Suppose something is missing. So just go here and if in the list it is not available, just click other option. You can search whatever you want. Suppose something Java, I want to see it or else uh, there is a debug. So here you can see Java debug is there, mail debug is there. Suppose so normal debug is not appearing, the Java debug. So you can you can select this it will come automatically in the uh, in the any point studio hope you guys are clear right any so the, these kind of things you should aware it quickly will get to know the things then uh, you can uh, you can select like that particular option it will come automatically okay now so that kind of way you uh, you should learn it actually otherwise you know it will take some time suppose if you're not aware it and then where you have to google it or else you have to talk to me then these kind of things it will take some time actually first try to play with any points to be where all the options where it is so that kind of things so yesterday we discussed about clearly these things this is a palette and then this is a debug mode option and then this is console console contains all the server logs and then whatever you are put putting the logs in the uh, flow that logs information console in the console it will display and then this is a canvas canvas contains three options one is design view next one is global elements third one is uh, xml view so this is a design view in the global elements i told you so whatever the common configuration common things in your project so global elements is talking about the specific project any common information suppose here observe here that is a mysql configuration is a common right so in your flow suppose i have a one flow so tomorrow i'm going to implement one more flow here only same database test project i have to implement one more flow so that time you know so i don't want to define uh, once again the configuration right mysql configuration because already there so just simply drag and drop the database connector i will use existing thing actually the MySQL config, uh, configuration already I uh, configured, right? So same thing I can continue it actually. You don't want to see it once again. So these kind of things, so specific to that project, the conf common configuration you can put into the global elements. So the next one is configuration XML. So whatever you are doing in the front end, I mean in the design view, it will reflect to the XML view, okay? So this is about canvas. Canvas contains flows. Flow is nothing but a combination of message process. Message processor in the sense, so each and every component is nothing but a message processor. So here you can see many segregations in the palette. So you can see the right side segregations. Like first one is scopes. These are the scopes. Scopes in the sense like a asynchronous scope and then batch, cache, flow. These are all coming under scope actually, right? So asynchronous in the sense, uh, like uh, generally any request, if you are requesting Facebook, suppose I'm trying to uh, log into the home page, I'm trying, I'm trying to enter the username and password for the base Facebook, right? So until unless I, I will get the response, I have to wait for that uh, index page or else starting page, right? Uh, until that, I can't able to do anything on that particular page. So that is nothing but a synchronous, synchronous response. Once you hit the request, 
um, from the user. So you have to wait for the response till the server respond, right? That is another thing, but a synchronous. Asynchronous is nothing but hit and forget kind of thing. I don't want to wait for the response. I'll just hit it, I'll forget it actually. I will continue my next level process, right? So that is nothing but a asynchronous, hit and forget kind of thing. So these kind of scopes, flow, uh, flow, what was the scope of the flow, subflow, and then private flow. So these are all the coming under uh, scope, scope uh, segregation. Next one is uh, uh, connectors actually. So these are all the connectors guys. So connector is nothing but it's an adapter. So suppose I want to connect to Amazon. So there is Amazon as the connector is there. Suppose I want to connect to Facebook, Facebook connector is there. I want to connect LinkedIn or else MongoDB or else SAP HANA, SFTP uh, or else uh, I want to connect some database. So these for everything we have connector is available. So you don't need to write any code for that. So just choose that options, whatever the configuration is there. We have to configure that accordingly. Suppose Amazon S3, I want to connect Amazon S3. So then you, you can drag and drop the Amazon S3 into your uh, uh, flow. So then whatever the configuration expecting, observe here, it was expecting some configuration. What are the information? It was expecting some access key and secret key. Who will share this information? You are not much familiar with Amazon, right? So because I'm, I'm a means of developer and also middleware developer. So this information will get from the Amazon. We are working on the target system, right? So we'll get, boss, I need this information, access key amount, secret key. So then they will share you that information you put into here in your connector. You can test the connection. You can, you can see the options also. Most of the connectors have a, this option. Once you configure that, so you can click the test connection. The test connection is working. So you know, you can continue with the work actually. So till that you have to so clearly put it. So if you are getting an error, so maybe something is gone wrong. So then you have to correct it or then you have to test connection. No need to deploy it. Here itself, you will get to know. So the that particular connection is working or not or else. So the access key is giving wrong or else secret key is giving wrong. So then they have to correct it accordingly. We have to work on it. Okay. And then once you're done, so here is a list of operations. What do you want to do with the major S3? So connection is successfully happened. So then what do you want to do it? You want to store the object or else you want to pull an object or else you want to uh, store something else or else. So whatever the operation, create an object, copy an object. These are all the op uh, operations for S S3 actually. Amazon S3, uh, right? So these kind of things, simply configuration, you don't need to write any code for that, okay? So that is about um, uh, connectors. Similarly, you can see, you can go through it all the options, guys. There is a components. So there is a components like Java component, uh, MQP. So MQP is for uh, uh, queuing mechanism, queuing mechanism. There is a queuing mechanism called uh, RabbitMQ. For RabbitMQ, so uh, for uh, talking to RabbitMQ, there is a client called AMQP, guys. You have to use the AMQP connector, then you have to uh, talk to RabbitMQ, actually. Like that, we have so many components are there, expression component, JavaScript component, flow reference component, expression component. So we'll see in our code, so what was the purpose of each component, so we'll see. So at least whatever the fake frequently used components will explain you. You can go through some more extra components also. Okay. So next one is transformers. So these are transformers. So the transformers, uh, the functionality of the uh, functionality of transformers is. So I want to convert one format to another format. Suppose I'm getting a object from the input. I want to convert into string, object to string option is there. You can search in the search bar, object to string is there. Then I am getting XML input, so JSON I want to convert it. So XML to JSON is there. So you no need to write any code, so simply you can choose that particular option. I am getting a file, I want to convert into a string that file. So choose that component, so drag and drop it. Right? 
so that is nothing but a transformers but so in 4.0 guys now we are in a 3.9 right in 4.0 um, so there is no transformers right only tra only transformer is uh, nothing but a data wave guys for everything we have to use only data wave now in 3.9 also you can use to, con to convert uh, one format to another format so here is an option so top level there is an option called so what format you want to convert it you can see the output here so application slash java application slash xml application slash uh, some json so it will clearly mention so what format you want to convert it if you put it it will convert into that specific format so that's why so they removed all the transformers whatever you've seen just now xml to json object to string file to string so they, re they removed all the options they put it only in the transform that is nothing but a database right so this will take care to convert whatever the format so so that's the thing about 4.0 so like that we have a uh, other options like filters guys there is one more thing called filters so we're talking about palette guys palette uh, uh, segregate into different different uh, uh, different different components or a different message process you can see so so next one is filters so the filters uh, you can see the uh, custom filter also i can prepare it and then some uh, the the purpose of this filters exactly so i ha i'm getting a huge data i want to filter out of that uh, some of the records based on the salary or it's based on the some condition or also based on the status right mm, i'm getting some employees like active employees and active employees I want to fetch only active employees. I don't want to get inactive employees. The particular query is giving all the employees, but I want to load only active employees. There is a status column called active employees. You can take that status column, then you can filter it. So that kind of filtration, under operation, on operation, regular expression, schema validation. Right? So these are all coming under uh, uh, filters actually if you want to do custom filter you can use the custom filter also that kind of support is there okay so basically this is the filtering the data whatever you are getting so the next one is flow control guys mm, how we'll control the flow so means suppose uh, just now we see the active employees and active employees if i if you get the active employees i want to do something if you get uh, in active employees i want to do something else right so means what we are doing here we are trying to control the control of my flow based on the active and based on the inactive right so that time you know um, you can use choice control accordingly you can route it actually if you if you're getting it uh, if you're getting a active employee you want to do something if you're getting an inactive employee you want to do something else right so that kind of things you can control your flow so for that purpose you can use this flow control so there is a choice router and then there is a, a collection splitter so you can use this splitter you can apart from that uh, uh, filter so just now we see the filter filter what it will do whatever the data we are getting it can filter it actually right uh, based on the filter condition uh, we can get the data so but this collection splitter what it will do whatever the data you are getting so it will split it so based on the uh, size suppose i'm getting a huge data as input like one gb of data we are getting as an input so we can't have to load one gb of data in the mule soft actually it will allow only uh, 30 mb of data 40 mb of data so because uh, even 90 mb also allowed but uh, uh, the the capacity of the ram I mean the, the in the cloud will choose a v course and worker size actually the v course should be should be uh, more than 2 gb 3 gb then it will allow it actually suppose you are using a less memory suppose i am using a 500 mb right so i can't be able to load 30 uh, i mean 30 mb of data that time what you can do is you can split it so based on the size i can load only 10 mb of data at a time you can split it based on the collection splitter you can allow it right so then first successful and until successful so these are all uh, coming under uh, uh, flow control guys 
so the next one is error handling this is an important thing once you done your flow once you done your flow so you have to implement the error handling part because something gone wrong in your flow the flow control will come to the exception strategy okay so in the exception strategy we have to clearly tell the client who you are requesting to us so boss this is a so this is a problem we are facing with the target system so then the, like that uh, you have to prepare our message uh, reading i mean meaningful message you have to prepare it so that to what format it is suppose client is always expecting a json format right client in the sense you um, a requester who ever requesting us he is nothing but a consumer i am talking about right i will just give brief thing so exactly how it is look like guys there is a front end system right um, so like i am just putting a some gui right he is requesting to uh, we'll sort requesting in the sense we will expose a uh, will expose a rest api right so he is trying to consume it he is sending to payload right he is trying to consume our uh, uh, whatever the url you shared right rest api url he is trying to consume it right uh, then he fill the information there is an interface a gui interface he'll try to uh, fill the data what are the mandatory fields then he is trying to click a submit button right so mail soft will receive this payload so then what mail soft will do so mail soft will do some kind of manipulation in the middle there so then so what are the target system suppose i'm just putting like uh, salesforce is my target system i want to insert some opportunity into the salesforce right he is trying to fill the data opacity data and he is trying to consume will soft information will soft will prepare that uh, so salesforce uh, uh, how salesforce is expecting maybe salesforce is always expecting some uh, object format or a json format that format we have to prepare it and then that to so this particular guy who you are requesting uh, to, uh, to create an opportunity in the salesforce that guy should have an access to the salesforce sandbox right so that kind of uh, access checking all these things we can do in the middleware so that once you done it will push the object to the salesforce so then we'll get a response from the salesforce once uh, uh, created an object successfully right created an opportunity successfully so that kind of response we have to come back with the will sort will sort we share to the gui because it's a synchronous right he is waiting for the response he is just hitting the mail soft mail soft will talk to salesforce salesforce will do the response back same response will share to the gui so because it's a synchronous right so then coming back to here when you are doing something here right something gone wrong so then this guy is always expecting whatever the format whatever the issue whatever the success response or failure response or else whatever you are getting so he is always expecting a json format so even if you are getting error also in the middleware so you have to prepare it as a json format you have to send to the gui hope you guys are clear what i am trying to say so that way you have to so whenever something gone wrong it will go to the except, exception strategy right in the exception strategy you have to prepare that json format you have to send back to the gui right so suppose sometimes some 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 of the clients will ask boss whatever you are getting Either you are getting a success response or else failure response. Please send a mail. Please send a notification to us. Or else, please push into the queue mechanism. Right. So then, uh, then that part where you need to implement it. So in the in the one of the component of uh, choice uh, exception strategy, you have to implement. So in the in the choice block or else cache block, we have to implement that uh, SMTP configuration, mail configuration, right? so mail configuration we have to implement it then whenever you are getting that error so it will intimate that uh, uh, whoever the recipient you put it to the smtp so then it will go uh, go to the mail to him right so that kind of thing so some of the clients will ask so whatever you are getting an error so push to that push into the queue queue mechanism right so that uh, that implementation of queue you have to do into the catch block so one of the catch block suppose i'm getting a sql exception so that sql exception so we have to uh, push into the queuing mechanism or i'm getting this error or else we have to uh, it's a depends totally so what whatever the client requests so we have to do accordingly right 
so hope you guys are clear that is about exception strategy so next finally uh, there is a security guys that is what provider model is there and then we'll see HTTPS SSL also we'll see uh, in, the, in our sessions okay hope you guys are clear in the palette so do you have any questions about palette it, it's clear isn't it okay great so coming back to the package explorer guys yesterday we didn't discuss about our package explorer also uh, i will try to quickly open one of the project any project is fine just i'm trying to open the uh, i'm trying to explain the structure of the project so once you create the project so whatever the name you created uh, while creating you enter so with that name it will create it and then here you can see this first option is src main app flows so you can see the reference library is also this automatically cut it guys you don't need to bother about that um, uh, this is actually we added for mysql connector apart from that so uh, the java the java jar files and then mulesoft related jar files it will automatically come observe here there is a java related uh, libraries required uh, uh, JRE system libraries automatically it will come and then mules mule soft libraries also you don't need to bother about that and then apart from that so there is a src main app yesterday we discussed about the src main app so uh, here is the flow actually so whatever the name you are giving the project name by default whatever the project name you enter right with that name the first flow it will create it actually if you want to rename it you can rename it guys you can click uh, F2 or else try to click on that, rename it, you can rename it. Or else you can go to the back end. So here is the flow name, something else is there. You can change the flow, flow name also if you want to change it. Right. And then, um, so uh, we discussed yesterday, I guess, this uh, this contains all the flows, guys. First thing, that's also main app. So if you want to create a new configuration file, Configuration file is nothing but your XML file, guys. If you want to create a new configuration file, right click on that, create a new new configuration file, new configuration file, give some name, automatically reflect the file name here. If you give space also, it will adjust it. Observe here, guys. I'm just giving spaces and then automatically it will take the underscore. Right? So it will adjust it accordingly, but the should not be spaces, it should not be special characters while creating a configuration file. So it's better. So you can write the description. What was the purpose of that? Each XML you are going to write it, right? There is a specific reason you are writing particular flow now. So then you can do the description also. And click finish, it will reflect automatically here accordingly. So based on your business logic, you can drag and drop the things, you can go ahead accordingly, right? So coming back to here, so this is about configuration file. So hope you guys are clear. Next one is there is a mule app dot properties. So that is a part of app folder. Okay. So what it will do? What was the purpose of that mule app dot properties? Okay. So here, actually, when you are trying to implement your project, so it should be environment specific, right? Now I'm in a, in my local host. So in my local host, first I will test my project. Is that working or not? Or else I will test my particular service. Is that working or not, right? So tomorrow, once I'm clear with the uh, local host, right, everything is working fine. I will push my changes to some other environment, dev environment, or else, so QA environment, or else production finally, right? So that way we have to, so your project should support environment specific. So that kind of things you can put, you can put into the new lab dot properties like env equal env equal some production dot or I'll say environment equals some local. So this will come automatically, guys. You no need to put put it manually. It will come automatically, right? So how it will how it will come automatically here? So whenever you are doing environment specific of your project. So in the bottom, there is a file called, uh, if you scroll down here, there is a mule project.xml. So each and every project, once you create it, so by default, 
you will get this option new project.xml if you double click on here it will expand and you can see this so what server runtime you are using right your project next one is yesterday we discussed about the domain backup so if you have any domain project you can use the domain project but if you don't have any by default you can keep it so next one is if you see here so here is an option actually environment variables if you click plus symbol now so we can add it here if you click plus symbol suppose env equal to env equal to local so this what it will happen whenever you are uh, uh, whenever you are, see observe here earlier it is not there right hope you guys are clear i'll just change this maybe so once you deployed it will reflect guys but the first time you can observe here earlier it is not there so then automatically it will reflect here whatever the changes you are doing i'll just see this observe here guys so automatically automatically it will reflect here so this particular file so what was the purpose it is mule app dot properties file the purpose is it's a environment specific okay so whatever you are doing in the mule project dot xml it will reflect automatically mule dot app dot properties so we'll use that one feature i will explain what you put it there and all so but as of now think it so the, this is specific to environment specific so according to our environments client have a different environments right they have dev environment production environment uat bat and then uh, qa environment multiple environments are there this is specific to environment okay next one is mule deployed app properties there is other file called mule deployed app properties so in this observe here whatever the whatever the xml configurations you are creating right so that you can see with a comma separator so there is a database test.xml and then test.xml two xml's i have okay so we can see this uh, as a comma separator one second guys sorry for that uh, here uh, you can see this uh, whatever the xmls we put into the uh, under app folder right? this will reflect automatically so if not reflect here so whenever you are trying to deploy it so that time it will reflect guys that is one thing so still if it is not reflecting one moment guys please
okay so sorry for that guys and then here uh, so this is one thing uh, if not re reflect here so then uh, so you can't able to recognize this particular xml actually so that time you know you can keep it manually but generally it should come automatically so then then uh, restart it so then maybe it will reflect it okay so that is one thing uh, and then next one is uh, redeployment there is a re redeployment dot enabled equal to right means so whenever you are doing changes suppose i already deployed this application right so on top of that i did some changes so redeployment dot enable true means see it will automatically redeploy it actually you no need to deploy manually so that is the meaning of that if you already deployed it so on top of that i made some changes i just click save button so then what it will happen it will redeploy automatically that was the meaning of this so next one is encoding utf8 format so whatever you are using components or whatever you are doing some syntaxes it will support utf8 format maybe you people are aware of what this uh, utf8 uh, some uh, some kind of uh, encoding format it will support that one next one is a domain default just now we see in the, in the uh, mill project.xml right so this is talking about domain and even environment specific to right so uh, this will reflect here actually if it is a if you keep it some domain project so here also it will reflect here right so this is also important for else mail deployer properties okay mostly this thing actually whatever the resources whatever the configuration files you are using so that will reflect here so otherwise it will say like file not found some kind of thing actually okay? so that is about that and then uh, coming to here there is a lib folder uh, lib folder actually I manually put it so because uh, here in my in my flow I'm trying to talk with the database so if you are talking with the database so here is a JDBC concept guys so in Java there is a JDBC concept right so any language if you are talking to some third party things right you need some supporting jar files Okay, so if you're talking to any third party systems like database or also some uh, any third party, so they, they have their own, uh, uh, own uh, dependencies actually. Like if you're talking to this uh, MySQL, MySQL have own dependency like MySQL jar file. If you are talking to MongoDB, MongoDB have their own jar file. If you are talking to some Oracle OJDBC jar file. So that specific jar file, specific dependency will be there. So that dependency you have to keep it under lib folder, guys. So that's why here you can see this. Uh, that is in the class path. It will reflect here. Right? So that's the thing. But so this is a normal project. We didn't create a uh, Maven project. That's why you have to do manually. If it is a Maven project, it will. Uh, we have to keep the dependency. We'll see that later. That one, but. So thing is, uh, the lib folder, uh, why I put it here, so because of my flow, so it was talking to database, that's why I put it in lib folder here. Okay, so that is about that, the SRC main app folder, guys. We cover all the options. So the next thing is, SRC main API folder. So SRC main API folder, it contains, um, if you see uh, the diagrammatical representation of this, Suppose here from the GUI, you are getting a request, then Millsoft will talk to the Salesforce. From the Salesforce, we'll get response. These are life cycle or else whatever it is, right? So uh, flow process, you can say. 
so here the gui guy is trying to uh, trying to talk to mules off with the payload right so suppose think like this in the salesforce uh, if you want to create an opportunity uh, this guy was expecting some 10 fields right out of 10 fields so five are mandatory at any cost you have to send it so remaining five are optional okay remaining five are optional so when he is when when the user is trying to talk to mulesoft so mulesoft should aware it so what salesforce is expecting how many fields will expect uh, out of uh, whole fields how many fields are mandatory how many fields are optional this guy the middleware should aware it they will share the information to us so that so when the GUI is trying to hit the request with the non with the without mandatory fields anyway it will come to the salesforce in the salesforce it will get fail obviously so because this guy is sending uh, not sending mandatory fields so what we are doing here for avoiding unnecessary transaction so mulesoft is will already aware it what are the five mandatory fields so that's why here there is a concept called raml guys in the mule only there is a concept called raml that's specific to rest api rest api modern language the raml is there in the raml what you can do is whatever you are aware about the five mandatory fields we'll put it here raml we'll see that in future but we'll put it here uh, in the raml what raml will do before talking to your api so this raml will come into the picture in the raml i am already put it so these are the mandatory fields these are the optional fields so first whenever the gui is trying to hit the request so that will go to the raml okay so raml will validate it all the fields are available or not even five mandatory fields also each field return type also you should aware it so suppose two of, two of them are integer, one of them is string, one of them is array, another one is, another one is something, some, some other format. So like that, we can validate here each and every return type of that also. Mandatory fields as well as return type. So minimum fields, maximum fields, length. We can restrict the length also. Suppose one of the fields should uh, text area we are expecting. So that should be only uh, some 500 characters not more than that. So these kind of things we can restrict in the RAML, right? So whatever the RAML stuff, like restriction, right? Uh, JSON validation, examples of the input, example of the output. These are all files you can put into SRC main API. Hope you guys are clear. Whatever the RAML stuff, like RAML specific things, like JSON input, JSON output, uh, what are the mandatory things, what are the optional things that we will do in the JSON schema, schema files, all the schema files. So I'm talking about one flow, right? Maybe here multiple flows will be there, right? Each and every flow have their own uh, restrictions, own mandatory fields, own optional fields, right? So own request, own response like that, right? So whole files we can keep into the SRC main API. You guys are clear? So the next one is SRC main Java. So SRC main Java. So this is specific to Java files, guys. In worst case, in worst case, if you write any Java code, right? So if you are choosing any Java component here, there is a Java component here. So if you choose any Java component here, right? If you implement some Java code here, so that file you should keep under uh, SRC main Java only. Right click on this, right click on the SRC main Java, create a new class. Create a new class. Then it will go automatically in the SRC main Java. Right? If there is no um, Java files, you no need to keep it anything. Right? That's the thing. So next one is SRC main resources. So this contains by default log4j2. The log4j mechanism by default is there guys you no need to implement externally so we have to simply use the component called uh, so logger there is logger is there wherever required you can drag and drop this logger right so this supporting uh, log4j2.xml how it will behave here 
um, so whole things by default it will be here behave in the sense generally the log file size is 10 MB here we can expand we can maximize it also that one and then what was the name of the log file right so every observe here there is a rolling strategy maximum 10 files it will maintain in the server okay if more than 10 10 files so each file is 10 MB the logger I am talking about logging mechanism I am talking about each file uh, size is 10 MB if more than 10 MB it will create a one more file like that 10 times it will create it you can see this maximum 10 times if 11th file will come what it will happen existing one it will remove it it will create a new one that's the thing so that is that logic already there if you want to do any modification you can do it here right here you can see a warn level debug level trace level so many things you can see in the bottom so that is by default there if you want to do any modification you can modify it here so next one is SRC main resources apart from the log 4 g mechanism whatever the content whatever the content required by uh, required by your project like uh, suppose I want to put some images I want to put some uh, JSON files I mean digital files or else I want to put uh, some example files right uh, like uh, uh, any example file any content required by project apart from that RAML things guys RAML stuff there is a separate folder apart from the RAML any content required by your project so then you can dump into the SRC main resources hope you guys are clear so next one is SRC main visitor this is specific to visitor files guys you can put it visitor under resources also it will support or else you can there is a separate folder is there visitor visitor is for soap calls guys there is a soap soap like rest there is a soap a soap is there right we'll discuss that later but whatever the soap related things right you can put in that visitor files into SRC main visitor so if you keep the resource file anything under resource file by default that should be there in the class path guys right generally if you are using something right so if you are using some file or else if you are using some image should be in the class path that time uh, I can able to use in the project right so by default whatever you put it into the SRC main resources right so we discussed about that environment specific also right each and every environment have separate uh, uh, external configuration file like dev dot properties or dot properties pa dot properties whole properties file you have to keep it into the SRC main resources only if you keep it SRC main resources it will be there by default in class path of the project so next one is SRC test Java guys SRC test Java so if you see in the uh, just now we discussed about SRC main Java right so if you write any Java class here uh, we'll write some test test case for that actually test class for that whatever you will write the Java class you can write a JNA test class right that test related Java classes you can put into the SRC test jar, test slash java right next one is SRC test time unit so whatever you will write the flows right you can write the MNU test cases for that actually the purpose of the MNU test case is so without deploying your project you can test it actually your flow is working or not right? so that kind of MNU test cases you can put into the under SRC unit. so next one is SRC test resources just now we see SRC main resources right so this is for main your project your project specific actually project specific in the sense your flow will expect some information that will read from the SRC main resources but again here we are going to write a SRC test in minute right so that also requires some content obviously right so like environment specific or else whatever the thing that we have to keep into the under SRC test resources you guys are clear so the next one is oh, so this is by default we drag and drop the image and that's why it's coming here 
this is a src system library java library then mule library that's all guys this these two folders keep on getting and whenever you are compiling whenever you are building your project it will remove it it will freshly create it so well, that's all guys about the package explorer so do you have any questions about the structure of the project you can ask uh, 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 so uh, we are creating this uh, uh, java files and uh, uh, the flows and the different uh, uh, categories right so it will be interlink uh, interlink with uh, each and everything right in the uh, complete flow design yes in the flow you call the java component no we are creating um, in under apps we are creating a uh, um, flow structure and uh, under api we are creating uh, raml files right hmm. yes that's what i'm saying no? so, so, so that, here uh, in the, so in the flow let me say in the flow suppose there is a json validation related to raman so in your flow you have to call that json validation right so okay. only that time it will reflect it will go there whatever you put in that uh, json validation it will validate it there is a relation whatever you are putting src main java src main api these are all associated with your flow with your configuration flow okay so whatever we are keeping in the flow those will be reflected in the ap uh, under java and everything right not reflecting you mean to say uh, yes so if you modify something it will reflect automatically here yeah and that's what, actually, I, I, what I, I, i'm saying it's a opposite way actually so suppose here you created a one java class here right the java class we have to refer in your flow you are getting right so so okay. there is java class or i created a uh, something in the src main uh, this api folder we have to refer using sub component suppose there is a java component so i have to drag and drop this java component here if you see here there is a class name here where is that class name exactly that is under src main java you are getting right Oh. Okay. Okay. Got it. We just need to refer this. Uh, yeah, we just need to refer from yeah. here in the flow, yeah. right? Exactly. So, got it. Out. Okay. So, any other questions, guys? Oh, sir, SRC test Java test M unit. These are uh, we need to create it manually, correct? Folders, sir. Huh? Um, not folder say in the content content, the content uh, to create to, a test even case all, uh, even all we are creating right see this is yeah. a main java content we have to create it to i mean what are the things we are going to put it we have to create it okay fine so any other questions guys okay if we don't have any questions we'll wind up the session guys uh tomorrow no session so we'll connect on monday okay no okay okay venkat so please share this uh, sure. i will share the recording with you yeah, yeah. before going to office i will share this okay hope you guys are clear so we'll connect on monday guys thank you so much if you have any questions you can whatsapp me guys you have my number you can send me mail you can whatsapp me sure actually i am facing an issue with jdk i i, I mean i try to install my office machine okay so uh, i have downloaded the jdk version but still it is uh, throwing error i will send you the screenshot what i am getting so actually when you are trying to create a project so here the jdk will reflect actually so here in the next step so the, here is the java Observe here, Java should reflect. Download one point eight. Don't download one point ten. Ten, okay. Download one point eight and install it and configure the path. Path in the sense class path. Okay. Uh, set it in properly. the link itself. It is saying uh, JDK eight, right? I mean, uh, but I see. I just uh, installed that. No, no, I see. No, that will that will point to the one point ten actually. 
don't use 1.10.8 download 1.8 and put it uh, and install and uh, send the class path just uh, send the screenshot i will help you okay sure sure okay i'll send the environment variables as well sure sure that's all guys oh, thank you so much we'll meet on monday sure and thank you